This is a story tree. It is used by storytellers to tell their audience that the story is about to begin. Once the story starts, the tree is put away and the next time it appears, the audience know that the story is over. In a time when a dragon king built his palace on two crimson flowers. In a time when the sun, the moon and the stars were stolen. In a time when the beauty of a true smile gave rise to one of the largest thermal lakes in the world. In such a time there was the dragon kingdom and the fairy kingdom. The Dragon King ruled and he had a daughter whom he loved very much. The Fairy Queen ruled and she had a son whom she loved very much. And the two kingdoms prospered. Time went on as it does. Well, the Dragon King was happy, especially when his daughter came up and said to him, Father, I've fallen in love with the fairy prince. I wish to marry him. The dragon king was overjoyed. He rushed to the fairy queen's palace and said, Why don't our children marry and our two kingdoms can be as one? Well, the fairy queen looked at her son whom she loved beyond all. And she turned to the king and said, No. The Dragon King could not believe his years. He reared himself up and in his rage he said, Because you have taken the light of love for my daughter, I shall take the light from your world. And he snatched the sun, he snatched the moon, and his tail flicked all the stars into a ball. He took all three and he flew home. As the fairy queen's world fell into darkness, the dragon king took the sun and put it into a golden egg. He took the moon and he put it into a silver egg. He took the stars and he put them into a white egg. He kept them somewhere safe where only his heart knew. As the fairy queen's world turned to darkness, out in the human world, a young woman's world was also turning into darkness. Her mother lay dying, and as Ilona's tears rolled down her face, her mother looked at her and said, Ilona, my love, I am soon to be gone and I would like you to live your life well. So remember, be honest, work hard and above all smile with a true smile because each time you do, it will be the gift of love that your father and I have given you. Well, that time came, and Ilona was left all alone in the world. She put on her boots, she took everything she owned, and especially the bread her mother had made. And she walked out into the world. Well, her feet took her past tall trees, across crunchy leaves. She felt the breeze flowing in her face. Her feet walked and walked. They walked for days, for weeks, for months. And gradually, as her heart became lighter, her smiles became brighter. And one day she walked without realising that she had crossed from our world into the fairy world. The darkness, oh, it lulled her. And she realised Trees were singing songs. The smell of all those flowers. Ah, oh, 
it was wonderful. And her tired, weary feet, well, they felt like they were walking on cushions. Ahead of her, she saw bright lights and a tall building. And as she got nearer, she realised it was a castle. She knocked on the door. It was opened. And she asked for shelter and food and work. Of course, the fairies replied, and they welcomed her in. But it soon became obvious that it wasn't the darkness that made in Lona so, well, inept to everything she did. If they gave her vegetables to cook, by the time she'd peeled everything, there was more to be thrown away than there was to be kept and eaten. If they gave her a broom, she took it and she swept so hard, she ended up putting dust all in the air. If they gave her their beautiful silken clothes to wash, she washed them so briskly that there were just shreds. In the end, they gave her fires to light. And she was quite good at that. So one day she was lighting it and she heard a footstep. And when she looked up, she smiled towards the sound. It was the fairy prince. He saw the beauty of that smile and he was intrigued by what he'd heard about the human girl. And so words were spoken and of course love blossomed as it does. The fairy prince realised his mother would say no should he ask to marry and so he said to Ilona, go and tell my mother you will get back the sun, the moon and the stars and in return, all you want is a wish, and I will help you. This is exactly what Ilona did, and the fairy queen thought, ha, just a wish, how easy can that be? Ilona left, and she walked towards the dragon king's kingdom, and there, in between the two lands, was that great cave that the prince had told her about the great cave with the old wise woman. Hello? Yes? Uh, hello, I need your help, please. Hmm. What do you want? And Ilona told her. Hmm. All right, then I think if you work for me for three days, I can help you. Ilona took to working. She swept so hard and strongly, the floor of the cave was clean and the woman loved walking. When she got the bedding to wash, she washed so briskly that when the woman lay down to sleep, oh, it was blissful. And when she cooked, she saw the two piles and she put them both together. And the old woman, she took her bowl Mmm, that's delicious. Mm. As you worked so well, I will help you. She clicked her fingers and there was a three-legged horse. And she picked up and handed a whistle to Ilona. When you get to the Dragon Kingdom, you'll find the palace is on top of two crimson flowers. The stems you'll have to climb, they're thorny, they're tricky, and when you get to the top, if you need more help, blow that whistle. Ilona nodded. She got on the horse, she was there in a trice. She saw... Oh! The flowers looked beautiful. The stems were not great to climb, they were thorny, her hands were cut, and when she got to the top, there, ahead of her, was the great majestic castle wrapped around with a band of mist. And so Ilona took that whistle and she blew it and she heard tiny scampering feet and when she looked there was a tiny little mouse. I need your help. Please, the eggs. And of course the mouse nodded, 
went in and soon came out with the three eggs. Ilona put them in her pocket, put the mouse in the other, and she climbed down and sped away on the horse. But of course the Dragon King was faster. His heart told him the eggs had been stolen and he got there. My eggs? Ilona handed them. Once I'll let you go because you're brave. And he flew off. Ilona went to the old woman and she gave her a five-legged horse. Once again, Ilona got the eggs and the Dragon King was there. My eggs. The next time, the woman gave her a seven-legged horse. He runs like the wind. And here is a comb and a brush. Take them. And if you need them, throw them over your shoulder. Ilona got there. She got the eggs with the mouse. And she was racing like the wind. But the Dragon King was faster. And she could feel his breath on her back. And so she threw the comb. And the comb became a tangled, thorny forest. The King, he went this way, that way. And once again his breath was on her back and so she threw the brush and a great lake of fire formed east and west and way up high and the dragon king he could go neither or above. And so he ground his teeth in frustration and went back to his palace. Ilona got to the old woman. She gave back the seven-legged horse, the whistle and the mouse decided to stay there too. She got back to the fairy queen's palace. She gave the eggs and the fairy queen opened each one quickly. And the sun, the moon and the stars all went up in the sky and light flooded the world. What is your wish? Ilona looked and smiled and said, I want to marry your son. The fairy queen was going to use her favourite word. But then she saw the beauty of that smile of truth and love and she saw her son reply with his smile and she knew it was meant to be. And so of course there was a great wedding and the guests of honour were the three, five and seven legged horses, the old woman and that tiny little mouse. All was well and happy and back in the dragon kingdom when those flames had died down the Dragon King was left with the beautifully warm lake that he could enjoy his time in.